Kristen, what's the best restaurant at Disney World? Where should I eat at to celebrate a special occasion? What restaurant has the best view of the fireworks? Well, today I'll be answering all of those questions with dinner at Narcusi's. <laughs> Located at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, this signature restaurant is my absolute favorite here at Disney World. About a year ago, this restaurant reopened from a very lengthy refurbishment with a new look and a new menu that absolutely blew me away to the point where I think the food here is better than Victorian Albert's. I dined here for my birthday last year and we are back once again this year to celebrate, so it's going to be a little treat yourself kind of night. My mom's in town and she asked me where I wanted to eat to celebrate my birthday and of course the answer was Narcusi's. So we are going to enjoy some fantastic beverages, some delicious food, and of course have a great view of Happily Ever After. Before we head inside I do want to talk about where this restaurant is located because it's a little bit hidden and a little bit hard to find. If you walk all the way to the back of the resort where the boat launches from the Grand Floridian to the Magic Kingdom, you'll find it. So chances are if you've taken the boat to or from the Grand Floridian, you've walked right past Narcusi's and you didn't even even know it was here. But just because it's a little bit tucked away doesn't mean that it should be forgotten because like I said, this is my favorite restaurant here on property. And I'm very excited because I think we timed it just right to where we'll be able to watch the fireworks either from our table or we'll head out on the back balcony to watch. If you guys do decide to dine at Narcusi's, I highly, highly recommend you guys time your reservation up to when the fireworks in Magic Kingdom are. Just check on the app what date you're going and what time the fireworks are and line your reservation up 30 or so minutes, maybe a little bit more before, so you'll be able to get either a great view from your table or come outside to this patio that I'm on. The first thing I noticed upon sitting down is the silverware. You know you dine at Disney World restaurants too often. When you recognize the silverware, this is the same silverware that they have over at Flying Fish. I think it is some of the best, most well-themed silverware in the game. And it looks like they've brought it over to Narcusi's too. Let's take a quick look at the beverages. We have a little bit of time before the fireworks start and we want to get our drink order in before they do. They have a lime gimlet, a cold brew martini, a couple other things. The key lime pie martini is a highlight for me. They also have a marg, a couple other things. The white sangria is the other highlight for me. But I decided to go with something a little bit different this time around. We ended up getting out to the back patio a little bit late, so our spot for the fireworks viewing wasn't the best. But something really awesome that they do here is they'll actually pause dinner service to accommodate you guys for watching the fireworks. So no need to worry about your appetizers or entrees coming out while you're watching the fireworks. You can just sit back relax, enjoy the show. And something else that's really awesome that they do is once you order your cocktails, if they're not gonna be ready in time, they'll actually bring them out to you out here on the patio so you can enjoy them while you're watching the fireworks show. The service here at Narcusi's is always, seriously, top notch. Our waiter highly recommended the smoked dark and stormy, which is something I would usually never order. But like I said, I wanted to try something a little bit different and step outside of my comfort zone. He also let me know that this drink has the most expensive ice cube at Disney World. It's like a long ice cube that fills the entire glass. I guess we'll see what that's looking like. Well, now that we're back inside after the fireworks, I wanna give you guys my review of my little beverage, my dark and stormy, which I have never had one before. This has black seal rum, charred pineapple syrup, sweet vermouth, smoked chili bitters, and fever tree ginger beer for 17 bucks. While I don't hate it, I do like it, but I don't love it. I probably wouldn't order it again, but it's definitely something that's interesting and I'm glad I'm getting to try it. I do think next time though, I would stick with the key lime pie martini or the white sangria, which my mom and her friend that I'm dining with got. Mom, how's your key lime pie martini? Oh my God. So both the drink that I got, the key lime pie martini and what my friend got, the white sangria are my probably my two favorite drinks on property. I love both of them. Um, this, and I usually like sweet. This to me isn't very sweet, but it literally tastes like a piece of key lime pie. It is so good, so good. And I told you guys, the service is phenomenal here. As soon as we came back inside, our bread and butter was waiting for us on the table. This is not a bread and butter to miss. It's one of the best at Disney World at any sit down restaurant. This little sourdough loaf is served with some delicious fresh salted butter. It's so, so good. I mean, like the bread is already amazing and then you just add that fresh salted butter. The outside of that bread, I mean, you guys heard how crunchy and crispy it is and then the inside is just so soft. Oh my God. 
I love a good sourdough bread and this one surely doesn't disappoint. We will definitely be requesting another loaf. Well, now that we've enjoyed some bread, let's take a look over the menu here, starting with the starters. This is a new one here. They have a chilled seafood platter with a bunch of different stuff, but at $139, I don't think I'll be getting that. They also have a brisket and ricotta tortelloni, calamari, ocean charcuterie, shrimp and grits, potato gnocchi, soups and salads. We've got a lobster bisque, hearts of palm, and the blueberry barrel aged feta salad. I have had nearly every single one of these appetizers, and some highlights for me would be the lobster bisque and that blueberry and barrel aged feta salad. Both of those are phenomenal. I've also had these shrimp and grits and calamari. Both are really good, but I don't think they're anything to write home about. The only appetizer here that I've tried and didn't enjoy is the ocean inspired charcuterie board. It sounds like super interesting. It's literally like a couple different like seafood charcuterie style meats. Um, I really really just didn't care for it though. And in the spirit of trying new things, I decided to try something new that I have never tried off of the appetizer menu, the brisket and ricotta tortelloni. This has parsnip, brown butter, and raisins for $17. I've seen a couple of really good reviews of this dish, so I'm very eager to try it out. And I think we've got everything on that fork. That's so good. The pasta itself has a little bit of a bite, so you could tell that it's like freshly made. Like this is fresh pasta. The brisket is not, I'm, I'm honestly not tasting that much in there. What's kind of overpowering this dish is the parsnip puree, which I really enjoy parsnip puree. It's almost like just a little bit of a sweeter mashed potato. So I want to get another bite without that parsnip puree and just of the little tortelloni here. There we go, there's the flavor of that beef. The flavor is really good. It has like almost like a sweet jus on the bottom as well that adds a really nice flavor. I think this is a delicious appetizer. It almost like eats like a meal since you kind of have like a side in the parsnip puree too. If they made like a bigger version of this, I would get this as an entree here. But I am glad that they make it as an appetizer so you could get just a little taste and then try some of the other delicious entrees. My mom, the pickiest eater on the planet is gonna try out this tortelloni. So I thought it was gonna be like the California Grill wontons, um, the beef wontons. It's very good. It does taste similar, except when you eat it with the um, whatever that is. That was delicious. And I didn't, that was the part I didn't think I was gonna like, but very good. Yeah, this is definitely really good. I'm really enjoying it. I would get it again, and I recommend you guys try it out as well. But I still think the lobster bisque is the winner out of the appetizers. We just put in our entree order, so let me show you what we have to work with. There's some salmon, a scallop and gnocchi dish, Gulf shrimp bucatini, the surf and turf, black and red fish, New York strip, pork chop, and a veggie paella. Our server highly recommended the black and red fish, which I was very tempted to get, but it is a treat yourself night, so I'm gonna do the surf and turf, of course. But I hear the black and red fish is very, very good. Next time I come, I'll probably get that. If I wasn't getting the surf and turf, I would probably get the Gulf shrimp bucatini. I think that is like the second best entree on the menu out of the ones that I've had. Now the surf and turf here is $87. So this is definitely like a splurge meal, not something that I get every Every single time I come but since it is my birthday it is a treat yourself night I figured I had to get it the first time I got this which was last year on my birthday I was hesitant to order it because it comes with a filet mignon which usually I'm not like a big filet mignon person I prefer a strip steak or a ribeye but I really wanted the lobster tail so I decided to order it and I was, oh my god, it was so good. So good and so tender that I was literally cutting it with my butter knife. That's how easy it cuts. And it's so good that I in fact have this steak in my top three steaks at Disney World list. I can't name a favorite, so in no particular order, the list currently consists of the strip steak from Flying Fish, the ribeye from Le Cellier, and the filet from here at Narcoosie's. So if you're looking for a good steak dinner, I highly recommend any of those three restaurants, but specifically Narcoosie's for the view. Look at this view that we have from our table and the lobster tail and all the other offerings too. While we wait for our little little beauties to arrive to the table. The main event. Seriously, I don't know if there's any bread at Disney better than this one. Uh, maybe the boathouse, maybe the boathouse brunch rolls, maybe. But I just love a good sourdough. Like sourdough is my favorite kind of bread. We'll wash it down with our dark and stormy. It gets better the more I drink it because the ice cube is melting and diluting it a little bit. But you definitely can taste the like smoked chili bitters in there. It has like a 
pretty good smokiness. I've been thinking of starting a sourdough journey of my own because I love sourdough bread so much, but I just feel like it's so much work. Like I've seen that you could like buy a starter on TikTok shop, which is crazy. You can buy a sourdough starter on the TikTok shop. Um, but let me know if you guys make sourdough down below in the comments and let me know how much la how labor intensive it is so I can consider starting it up. Oh man, how good does this look? Our entrees have arrived. This is the surf and turf. It has a filet mignon, butter poached lobster tail, potato mash, roasted rainbow veggies, and a red wine demi-glaze for $87. All right, let's see if we could do the old, the old butter knife test. Let's see. Yep. You, you don't even need a steak knife. They did give us a steak knife and I was like, yep, yeah, pretty much won't be needing that. A nice good medium rare on there. If I was Nate, that would be a black and white moment. The red wine demi-glaze on there is just so good, but honestly, like, the steak itself just has so much flavor on its own. You don't even need the sauce. It just, like, enhances it even more. It's buttery. It's garlicky. It is so tender. It's, it's, it's to die for. It really is. You can't go wrong with it. And if you did want to order the filet without getting the lobster tail, without doing the surf and turf, it'll bring the price down a little bit. You are able to do that. I don't think they have it on the menu alone. They just have like a strip steak on the menu alone, but you can order just the filet on its own. So that's a way to still try the filet without kind of splurging if it's not a special occasion. But since it is a special occasion, we do have our lobster tail here. Go for a dunk in that butter. That too, it's just so tender and juicy and sweet and good. Yeah, you really you really don't even need butter. I, I'm pretty sure it's like butter poached already. Yes, yeah. And there's some kind of sauce Super tender. So my favorite steak on property used to be flying fish. It was the char crusted strip. Was that what it was? Char crusted strip. And you would not think that you would get the best steak on property at a fish restaurant, but it was really good. And that was my number one until I came here and now this is, I do prefer in all honesty, a filet over a strip or sirloin or anything. That would be like my treat yourself would definitely be um, a filet. The filet is cooked perfectly now. Um, the lobster, I'm not gonna lie, is a little bit tough, um, but you don't need butter to dip it in because it has like some kind of, I don't know, yumminess on top. Um, and I think it was butter poached to begin with. Potatoes, creamy, and yeah, I'll be skipping that cauliflower. Get mashed potatoes. Creamy and cheesy, just how I like them. It also comes with some rainbow cauliflower, which my mom said, ew, what's that, what's that purple thing on my plate? Just take the, um, skin off and give me the... I don't like cauliflower. Oh, I love She's cauliflower. so picky. I am just relaxing, eating, enjoying my meal. I think that's from Honey Boo Boo. I think it is. Did anyone else watch Honey Boo Boo? We did. Honey Boo Boo. I love Honey Boo Boo. Mama June. Mm -hmm. Sugar Bear. We used to love that show. Jen. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. But seriously, guys, this is like the perfect treat yourself meal. If you are looking to celebrate something, special occasion, or you're just looking to enjoy a delicious meal, come to Narcosis. Guys, I'm dying. I'm starting to develop the meat sweats. I had to help my mom finish her steak because she couldn't finish it. And I can't let this delicate morsel go to waste. Um, and I still have to save room for the best dessert at Disney World. Oh, the meat sweats are kicking in. We must push through, guys. Here are the desserts. The almond crusted cheesecake, hazelnut chocolate bar, berry pavlova, pineapple, and some cheese. And I know I have been raving about this surf and turf and all of the other food, but I actually think the best thing on the entire menu here at Narcosis is the almond crusted cheesecake, which is so out of the ordinary for me because I feel like I've been saying this every video, but I really don't enjoy desserts that much. Like it takes a lot for me to want to order a dessert. I do it for the videos just to show you guys, um, but like the almond crusted cheesecake here, it, it, it's the best on property. Here it is, the almond crusted cheesecake. This is a Lambert cherry sauce and Chantilly for $17. That's an expensive dessert. I must prevail against the meat sweats.
it is just so creamy and it has that like almond flavor all throughout it is it is so good and when you get those crunchy almonds and the tart cherries in there it really cannot be beat best dessert right here at Narcoosie's. If you guys want to try a bite of this dessert, you must get it now because it's going to be gone in like a minute. Now I know why you like it so much because you really like almond flavored things. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's good. And I always say, if you're going to take my advice and order anything on this menu, it has to be this cheesecake. If you're going to order one thing at this restaurant, it, it must be the almond crusted cheesecake. Well guys, after that cheesecake, I am certainly stuffed. Well, actually, I was pretty stuffed even before I ate the cheesecake. But what a way to celebrate my birthday. Maybe I'll make this a little birthday tradition. Uh, last year I visited for my birthday for my first time back since the refurbishment. And this year I'm here again. I went a couple other times sprinkled in between the two. And it's always such a treat when I get to visit. Like I said, it's not somewhere that I go to all the time just because it is definitely such a splurge. Um, but if I feel like splurging on a meal and treating myself, that is the number one place, in my opinion, to visit. And if you guys have still stuck around since my birthday last year, huge shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for continuing to watch my channel. I did make a video back then, um, but I wanted to do kind of like an updated one and show you guys um, more of the menu and a couple different things. Let me know in the comments if you did see my Narcoosies video from last year so I could let you know that you're a real one. Huge, huge shout out to my Patreon subscribers, Angela, Ashley, Barbara, the Calcanes family, Catherine, Lindsay, Misty, Shelby, Adam and Jen, and Brittany, Karis, Chelsea, Carol, Daniela, Marcel, Dante, Dustin and Nancy, Emily, Ethan, John Paul, Christina, Leah, Tori, Lisa, the Martell family, Michael Pickle, the Latham Thomas family, Tracy, Wayne, Jermaine, Eric, the Weaver family, Stephen, Andrea, Jessica, the Leibowitz family, Abigail and Robin, Jamie and Andrew, Diane, Julie and Eleanor. And thanks to all of you guys for watching Hopefully you guys are able to s snag a res at Narcoosie's. It's becoming harder and harder, I think, because word is getting out how good the restaurant is. I have a couple of other things planned for my birthday. We're going to do a little staycation with some friends, go to one of my other favorite restaurants, and hopefully I'll get to show you guys a little bit of that too. So I shall see you guys then. Bye.